When we look into a mirror, we think the image that confronts us is accurate. But move a millimeter and the image changes. Everyone knows what happened in the Soviet Union and throughout Eastern Europe during the post-war period. All this has been fully documented and verified. But my contention here is that the United States crimes in the same period have only been superficially recorded, let alone documented, let alone acknowledged, let alone recognized as crimes at all. The United States supported, and in many cases engendered, every right-wing military dictatorship in the world after the end of the Second World War. I refer to Indonesia, Greece, Uruguay, Brazil, Paraguay, Haiti, Turkey, the Philippines, Guatemala, El Salvador, and of course, Chile. Hundreds of thousands of deaths took place throughout these countries. We have brought torture, cluster bombs, depleted uranium, innumerable acts of random murder, misery, degradation and death, and call it bringing freedom and democracy. The United States now occupies 702 military installations throughout the world in 132 countries, with the honorable exception of Sweden, of course. The United States possesses 8,000 active and operational nuclear warheads. 2,000 are on hair trigger alert, ready to be launched with 15 minutes warning. It is developing new systems of nuclear force known as bunker busters. We must remind ourselves that the United States is on a permanent military footing and shows no sign of relaxing it. Its official declared policy is now defined as full-spectrum dominance. Full-spectrum dominance means control of land, sea, air and space, and all attendant sources. Many thousands, if not millions of people, in the United States itself are demonstrably sickened, shamed, and angered by their government's actions. But as things stand, they are not a coherent political force yet. But the anxiety, uncertainty, and fear which we can see growing daily in the United States is unlikely to diminish. I believe that despite the enormous odds which exist, as citizens, it is in fact mandatory to define the real truth of our lives and our societies. If such a determination is not embodied in our political vision, we have no hope of restoring what is so nearly lost to us, the dignity of man.